Okay, so let's continue with rotational inertia for extended objects or of extended objects. So remember, extended objects, all the inertia is not concentrated into a single particle, but it's, it's a distributed inertia, distributed mass. So say, for example, we want to calculate now the kinetic, the rotational kinetic energy of an extended object. How are we going to do that? Well, the way that we can do that is we can take this object and break it up into many, many little segments, little squares, as you can see. And then we calculate the kinetic energy for each of these objects and we add them up. Okay? And that would give us... So the kinetic energy of this guy is half delta m one v one squared okay what is this delta one or del one delta one it's just an infinitesimally small um, segment okay so we break it up into very tiny segments and delta m is a very very small mass small inertia times the velocity of uh, of that particle squared okay the speed squared and then we do the same for that guy and we do it for every single particle sorry wrong word every single segment okay and we get this the sum over n meaning there's n part n segments not particles there are n segments in this extended object and for each of those segments, we calculate the kinetic energy. However, because each of these guys has a different velocity, okay, so that guy has a different, a different velocity to that guy and to that guy, because they all, even though this object is rotating and it has the same rotational motion, the same rotational velocity, because these velocities, because these particles are, f are at different radii from the axis of rotation, they're going to have different velocities and different speeds. So what do we do? We say, well, we know that, that this tangential component velocity is related to the rotational uh, component omega. So, th so V the velocity is equal to omega r. So we substitute that guy into there and we multiply out and we get this. Okay? Sum over n segments of delta m n r n squared. Okay, so have you seen this guy before somewhere? Have you seen m r squared somewhere? Yes. So you can see we're heading towards a, a rotational inertia here. And then you've got the omega squared over there. Okay? Okay. So now this delta m n r n squared is the rotational inertia for a single segment. One of those little blocks, those little squares. Okay? So we can rewrite that previous equation like this. Let's look at it again. We can replace this with I n, meaning the rotational inertia of segment n. Okay? And so we get this. We get sum over n segments. So we're adding up every single rotational inertia in this extended object. We're adding up every single one. And because we're adding up all the rotational inertias of every segment. This becomes the total rotational inertia of the entire object. Okay? Alright. So I think that's... We've got that. Now, the question is... How do we calculate this? How do we calculate this uh, sum over n of delta m n r n squared? Well, if we keep making those segments smaller and smaller and smaller, okay, 
these segments become smaller and smaller and smaller, then in the limit, as this tends to zero, um, this summation becomes the integral of r squared dm. r squared dm, the integral of r squared dm for an extended object. Okay, so um, let's see. I want to go back here. I, I like to compare things. So this is for an extended object. And remember that this is for a particle. I equals mr squared for a particle. And, and I equals the integral of r squared dm for an extended object. Okay? So now, the textbook says it is difficult to evaluate this integral is difficult to evaluate for an arbitrarily shaped object. Okay, so we'll do an example, but um, if you've got an object that exhibits some symmetry and is uniform, that is to say, what does uniform mean? It means that the mass or the inertia is, dis is uniformly distributed over the volume of the object, then it is a lot easier to determine this integral. Okay? So here are some examples. So if you we'll, we'll we'll look at an example now, but if you apply this integral to this object which is a thin walled cylinder, you, your rotational inertia is mr squared. Okay? For a solid cylinder it's half mr squared. For a hollow core cylinder Okay, that we get this half m, which is the total inertia, outer radius squared plus inner radius squared, and etc. etc. Okay, etc. Um, here's a solid cylinder. Um, yes, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. Um, I see what you did there. That is the axis of rotation. Okay, these are, look at the axis of rotation. Okay, um, for these ones, these, this is your rotational inertia about this axis of rotation. But if you take a look at exactly the same object with a different axis of rotation, it changes. Can you see? So your axis of rotation is very, very important. It changes the resistance to rotation. Okay. Now with these guys, if you look here, because this is a symmetrical, symmetric object, uh, you've got these three axes of symmetry. And so this, is, this uh, rotational inertia is valid about any of those axes because of symmetry. Similarly for this guy, you've got three axes of rotation and so this 2 over 5 mr squared is valid for all of those uh, axes. Okay? Of rotation. Okay, so let's do an example in the next.